The car behind me is a 1952 Chrysler concept car, which was built by a gentleman by the name of Beryl Wolf. The vehicle was coined the Wolf Wagon due to his name. Beryl Wolf was a boat builder from Maine. He was very fortunate within his career to be able to afford to actually construct a car. He was proposing it to Chrysler at the time period to uh, compete with the Bugattis and some of the European style roadsters. The car itself is 22, 22 and a half feet long, uh, all fiberglass and wood. The motor in it originally was a DeSoto Hemi V8. All the kind of trim pieces on this car were just whatever the guy had laying around. The door handles kind of look like refrigerator door handles, the chrome pieces and stuff. It's just modeled off of whatever you could find. On the rear bumper, it's kind of got these two like megaphone chutes that where the exhaust originally dumped out. The power steering in this car is, if there's a pump there, if it's doing anything, it's very non-existent. Restoration is a plethora of trades. We're talking about the machining, we talk about the refinishing, we talk about the upholstery, we talk about the woodworking. It's a melting pot of industries. We cover everything from engine building to bodywork to how to make something from scratch, whether we're using a lathe or a mill, or even as they're doing over there, making a, a new fender for this Chalmers. We do it all. <laughs> Yes, we restore earlier vintage vehicles, but we're utilizing the technology of today to properly authenticate vehicles back to what they were when they were assembled in the period correct and era of which they were built. We take extensive research in ensuring that we are putting cars back to what they were from the factory. We're more historians than we are restoration technicians. We're doing the, the research, investigating and looking back through that particular vehicle. The automotive technology degree here at Pennsylvania College of Technology is an applied science in actual automotive restoration technology. It is a two-year associate's degree. Um, from the basis of that, students can utilize the degree itself to employ themselves in many facets so far as uh, entry-level positions in restoration, automotive repair, collision repair. Uh, it gives a very well-rounded approach. So the application of the degree is quite versatile. We had started with a simple three credit elective and automotive restoration based on our collision repair technology. From there, we sprung into actually fully developing a full two-year applied science degree in automotive uh, restoration technology. It utilizes portions of collision repair technology automotive repair technology, machine tool technology, and also our applied courses such as history and research, all encompass into a full associate's degree in applied science. The baseline of every one of our student projects is what we call the Antique Automobile Clubs of America First Junior. However, as any education, we strive for the highest level and therefore you can understand why we are pushing for concourse correctness in these vehicles. When you pull apart an early vehicle, such as the vehicle standing you know, directly behind me, you're opening up a time capsule. Whether it is a 1907 Duryea or whether it is a 1970 Chevelle. Well, right now we're driving a 1970 Chevelle Super Sport. It has a 454 big block engine in it. And it's pretty awesome when you get to take a car and strip every single nut and bolt off it and finally get to drive your final product. Uh, very exciting. This Chevelle that we're in took about three years to do. It was all student projects, student work, uh, in and out of class after hours to get it prepared for the shows that we've taken it to. And as you can see, I think our work pays off that we were able to get a first junior last year. And now this April, we just got a, uh, a first, uh, we just got a senior award. With all of our cars here, we properly bag and tag each individual part down to even the tail light lens. As it seems it might be a simple thing, it can get very complicated on a very rare car. So labeling passenger side and driver side, 
um, as opposed to right and left because you may confuse the next person that might be working on it. The first thing we do when we bring a car in, before we even wash it off in our wash bay down there, we'll actually start doing research on what kind of car it is. Does it have a numbers matching engine? Is the paint correct? Contacting the owner and previous owners, and also if it was at a dealership, what dealer options it had. Because before we remove anything, we need to know all of those facts. The first thing we do is we evaluate the condition that it's in. Each car that comes in is at a totally different state. The hardest research job I could say that we had to do here is um, over there we have a 1935 Rolls Royce and uh, it's a 2025. It being an aluminum body, we had to figure out what type of aluminum it was. So we have to take a metallurgy course here and by doing that I worked with a professor to find out that it's just an 1100 series aluminum, which is almost raw pure aluminum. So being able to weld that and repair it is very difficult. The process of uh, figuring out what a metal actually is, is a key thing in the restoration industry. This being such a rare car, you don't want to damage or ruin anything. So we took a sample and we were able to make a test piece. Uh, we used 6065 wire to uh, try and weld this material. Um, and when we did our later research and got our material back, we found that, that it was a 1500 to 1100 series aluminum. With this car, we actually had it soda blasted, it being all aluminum. So as you can see down here, it didn't affect the surface much, and there was not much heat as you would find in sandblasting or any other form of uh, media blasting. So to remove this paint, there was about eight layers of uh, a lacquer paint over on top of uh, different types of primers. And as we got down, we were able to work into, to find back here, our uh, original blue paint. It's the idea of putting things back to the point of which and how they were created. In order to do so, you have to learn and understand the process that the originator had used and then be able to mimic them. A few interesting things about this car, this Rolls Royce, uh, we found uh, someone's name had been written in it. And the interesting thing is his date of birth and his death were there. So someone had, had to have written that and he was about seven years old when this car was built. There was supposed to be a seam through here and somebody actually mended it back together and created one full piece when it was actually supposed to be two separate pieces. So we'll use a TIG welding process to allow that to be a nice clean hard weld. The expectations that a student would be encountering when they walk through our doors is the fact that they would be working on a museum owned vehicle. With the facets and the partnerships that we have with these museums, it allows our curriculum to be quite vast. It allows us to cover over a hundred years worth of automobiles. Some of the biggest things that we use is 3D printing. We've experimented with small components that can be 3D printed. In the future, you'll see many parts gone through what they call the additive manufacturing processes. Some other areas that we utilize technology is what we call waterborne paint technology. With the waterborne technology, we're being environmentally friendly. But on top of that, we're able to deliver a truly show-winning finish. We not only want to restore vehicles, we want to have a reputation for building what we call reference vehicles. The job market is, is fairly open. For example, paint and refinish, students can embark on a traditional collision repair facility that may do an occasional restoration. They can go so far as a full-scale restoration shop. They can move into interior specialist or upholstery work from here. They can work in machine shops that also do forms of vintage repair and vintage reconstruction. They can work in a lab, a laboratory setting where they are recreating parts with a printing process. The opportunities are, are quite extensive. Unlike a traditional program or even a, a traditional shop, in the restoration arena, we find that there are specialists. There are specialists on particular marks. There are specialists in particular models and eras. With our curriculum, we're able to give a sample flavor of pretty much the gamut of gasoline-powered vehicles. Can we make them experts in every area? It is a challenge. Do we strive for perfection? We do.